I now request our Dean, Dr. B. Murugan, to introduce the speaker. Sanas, could you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sanas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We could Hello. hear you. Yes, sir. We could hear you, sir. Sir. Okay. There was some disturbance. Okay. Um, on behalf of staff, College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dhanan Sagar University, uh, good afternoon to one and all. Dr. B. Selvamani, speaker of the day, dear participants, and my dear students, Co today, College of Pharmaceutical Sciences has organized a webinar on role of epigenetic in cancer translational research under the banner of the Anand Sagar University, which is existing for the last six decades under the banner of DSI. I'm very happy to welcome the speaker of the day, Dr. B. Selvamani, Associate Professor, Department of Pharmaceutical Technology, Center for Excellence in Nanobio Biotranslational Research, University College of Engineering, Bharadasan Institute of Technology Campus, Tirchirapalli, Tamil Nadu. He has completed his MPharm in Pharmaceutical Chemistry in 2001 and completed his PhD in Pharmacy from Jadavpur University in 2010, Calcutta. Dr. B. Selvamani has received many prestigious awards to his credit. He is the recipient of Tamil Nadu Young Scientist Fellowship for the year 2015 by the Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology. He is the recipient of Young Investigator Award for the year 2015 in recognition of research accomplishment award by Association of Pharmacy Professionals India. He is the recipient of Active Research Award for the year 2013 in recognition of his research, awarded by Center for Technology Development and Transfer, Anna University, Chennai. He has organized many conferences and sponsored seminars, which is sponsored by DBT, DST, MHRD from Government of India. He has received many travel grants from CSIR, DBT. He has published more than 104 research paper for his credit. And also he has written many book chapters. He has developed two software in the field of drug interaction and personalized medicine. He has delivered more than 40 lecturers. So with this in credential, I request Dr. B. Selvamani to take over the screen. Please welcome you to the College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Diana Sagar University, Bangalore, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for the nice introduction and uh, for the opportunity to share some of my research thoughts with you all people. And uh, am I audible, sir? Is it okay? Yes, for yes. You? Yeah, yeah. Fine, fine. Go ahead. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. So let me go into the topic. Uh, so uh, we know all about the genetics and uh, just I'm going to introduce, maybe many of you know these things or otherwise let me introduce the term epigenetics, which is over and above genetic. It means over and above the routine genetics. Sir, kindly share the screen. Selvamani, sir. Uh -huh. Okay. Sh share the screen. Go to the share the screen. Okay. So that I have uh, already shared. You are... Sir, no, it is no. visible. It is it's visible. visible? Yes, okay, okay. Fine, fine. Please go ahead. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the epigenetics is having role in many diseases and disorders. But uh, let me focus only on cancer and how we can do some pharmaceutical research based on these two things. So this is the objective of this talk. So I'm thankful for my university also having provided all necessary infrastructure and support for doing or conducting research. So. The outline of the talk is a very brief introduction of cancer. The next one is, again, a very brief introduction on translational research. Then let me introduce epigenetics, epigenetic regulators, epigenome, epigenetic targets, 
the perspectives and uh, finally conclusions. So we all know cancer. So it is the one of the most formidable human disease that we are facing. And the problems associated with the cancer is heterogeneity and uh, there is no universal therapy. There is no single treatment. We require multiple strategies for the complete elimination of cancer cells. Otherwise it is going to be recurring and it is having a state of metastasis and which will delay the therapy of uh, successful cancer therapy and may cause lethality. So the cell division in normal cells is having a controlled fashion, whereas in cancer cells is a uncontrolled fashion. So this is one of the uh, hallmark of cancer and many other characteristics we all know that normal cells and cancer cell it is irregular larger darker it is growing out of control it doesn't mature it doesn't communicate and it is invisible to immune cells and it loves or craves glucose and the energy efficiency is very very low so these are all the patterns that is very much contrast to the normal cells so remaining we all know about cancer. So let me introduce translational research here. So translational research in the sense, we need to develop the research outcome or we need to progress the research outcome into clinical practice. So this is the concept of translational medicine. Translation research is a broad term which applies for all domains of research. In case of medicine, it is called as translational medicine. So whatever the basic research on various aspects that need to be developed into products and these products need to be applied for the society. So it is the idea, new ideas. So the practice, the policies, the research put together, it is called as translational research and our own domain, it is called as translational medicine. So. It involves various aspects like basic health, preclinical research, clinical research, clinical implementation, and public health. So coming to the concept of translational science, it is not a single domain. We can say it is a multi-domain aspect. It requires input from various uh, disciplines, sciences and discipline. So it requires clinicians, it requires biotechnologists, it requires life sciences, so it involves many disciplines. So put together, we may term it as a clinical research and translational medicine. And uh, so we are into that domain. We are having a center for excellence in nanobio translational research. So therefore the opportunity to, to do certain aspects of this research is undergoing in our center. So let me come to the concept of genetics. <clears throat> So we all know that um, from parents, we inherit certain traits. The traits may be the characteristics or it may be the diseases. So whereas in turn, the father and the mother, they inherit from their parents, means our grandfathers and grandmothers. And they inherit their traits from their great grandfather and great grandmother. So the chain continues. So the aspect here, what we need to know is the basis of all these things is the chromosome that is found in the cell and the chromosome contains the DNA. So this memory from the great grandparents, grandparents and from the parents transferred to the children's or offsprings is mediated by DNA. So DNA memorizes most of the things so we have similarity, the parents and the children are looking similar in certain characteristics like this. So this is all the basis of genetics. So now we need to look into another aspect, uh, egg that is fertilized by a single sperm cell, uh, converts into a stem cell. And this stem cell, because of its genetic memory, it differentiates into various stages and finally develops into a organ. 
organ in the sense may be a specific cell and finally into organ. Say here the example given here in this slide, a stem cell is being converted into a neuron and this DNA memory helps the stem cells to differentiate into various organs like brain or kidneys or eyes or heart in and so on. So genetic memory is very much essential. So now we all know that DNA is now the basis for the memory. So the body contains tissue, the tissue contains cells, the cell contains chromosome and the chromosome contains DNA. So this is all we know. So the DNA constitution is four bases, that is adenine, guanine, thiamine, and cytosine. They link specifically between each other. So these free nucleotides assemble here and gets replicated with the help of the enzyme DNA polymerase and develops into a strand. And this strand is again helicases. With the help of helicase enzyme, it is constructed into a double helix. So now, the DNA in turn interact with the RNA through the process of transcription and translation to develop specific amino acid chains, means proteins. And these proteins specifically perform different functions, biological or physiological functions in our body. So ultimately, the DNA is having the memory. The memory is transcripted and finally translated into products called proteins. So now the memory is based on these bases, purine and pyrimidine bases, typically associated through the hydrogen bond and the hydrogen bonds. So now the final products, that is the protein, they perform various functions in our body like insulin, they act as a hormone, and immunoglobulins, they act for the defense, and hemoglobin, they act for the transport, and various enzymes, various storage proteins, structural proteins, receptors, dynamics, everything is mediated by the set of proteins, which is very much limited presented here. So the next comes, the genotype versus phenotype. So genotype, we all know, it is nothing but the DNA, the genetic makeup. So the genes tell the body how to do things, how to perform. So based on which the phenotype is being expressed, means the thumbprint or the fingerprint. So it is based on the DNA pattern. So we could able to differentiate. Similarly, based on the DNA, the body weight, the obesity, the diseases, many other patterns. It is all based on the genotype. So genotype is the basis or the fundamental for phenotype. So the color of the eyes, the hair pattern, the skin tone, so everything is based on DNA. So we all know the memory or the traits, it is from the parents and forefathers. So looking closer to the structure of DNA. So the DNA is a double helix structure. It is two nanometer diameter. So we all know the structure. This structure is very, very long. We all know that it can cover the distance of moon we will be studying in our, we had studied in our younger school days. So now the DNA is assembled or it is organized with the help of the chromatin fibers or the strings, which is linked through a beads on the string, means histone protein. So the histones will act as a bead, which binds these uh, chromatin fibers or DNA strands. And these linkers will develop into a nucleosome and the nucleosome will convert into a thick or a very tight helical fiber with a 30 nanometer diameter, which is a supercoiled structure and it is present in the chromosome. So now a very simple DNA means it contains only four bases, purine and pyrimidine bases, but it was 
present in abundance in a supercoiled form and put together it forms a chromosome of 700 nanometer dimensions so coming to the closer view of histones so histones are the major structural proteins means it maintains the structure of dna if it is not functioning properly the structural integrity of dna would be lost so the dna molecule is wrapped twice around the histone octamer so then to make a nucleosome and six nucleosomes are assembled into a solenoid in association with h1 histones and then these solenoids are in turn coiled into a scaffold which is called as a chromosomal matrix so very small dna it is then converted to nucleosome and the nucleosome is associated with a scaffold and then it is organized as a thing so it is a very small fragment 30 nanometer solenoid so this histone proteins is very very essential to maintain the structural integrity which in turn helps uh, to keep things in memory so this is a very important function that is maintained or that is mediated by histone proteins so the next one so this histone protein is having another uh, wonderful function in the dna so that makes a dna inaccessible and protects its memory in one particular time and in particular time it makes the dna accessible means it allows the dna to express its functions or translate its memory so here the memory is locked here the memory is opened so now this histone proteins when it is present in the chromatin fibers when it is condensed or when it is tightly packed it doesn't expose the memory to the body but in a condition when this histone protein relaxed it allows the dna to the environment and makes the dna accessible to the environment so here we could able to imagine this particular function as a, a simple electric switch which by which we can make a device electrical device switched on or a turned off so there are processes in this that could be influencing this on off process so number one transcriptional repression which includes dna methylation histone deacetylation and histone deubiquitination this is repression towards uh, decreasing the activity so here this is transcriptional activation here also we can have dna methylation histone deacetylation and histone mono ubiquitination so these reactions help the histone proteins to make the body or to release the memory in a on condition or in a off condition so this is the basis of epigenetics so which we are going to go in detail slide so the other one we all working for research to identify or to find some therapeutic modalities for diseases but certain diseases which are regulated by the genetic information or genetical disorder genetic disorders so as per the mendelian's uh, genetics so maybe an unaffected father and an unaffected carrier mother if they become parents there can be four different types of offspring so one is an unaffected son or an unaffected doctor maybe affected son and an unaffected carrier doctor so there is a chromosome so which determines the sex and there is a x linked allele here which determines this process so again this is a probability whether if we are falling into any one of these four categories so we are working for genetic engineering through the uh, subject genetic engineering to solve these complications so this is genetics but there is another condition that we grow as a baby and then we grow gradually and then we we become adult and then we become mid age 
we become old aged very old and then we die so now gradually if you look into this cyclic process here up to this young adult we may be very very healthy but after this young adult during this middle age we starting started inviting certain diseases and finally sometimes we will be mostly associated with diseases during the old age and finally we may die due to diseases so here there is a complicated events that is happening throughout the life time so which could be focused on life events and the associated stress so here the cells and the molecules they become plastic here because of the stress that is associated with the events that is occurring throughout the life so even from the birth or even during the pregnancy so it is not uh, after birth during pregnancy itself if there is some stress it is going to influence the gene means the dna and it all accumulates at these stages prenatal neonatal juvenile so up to young adult or maybe up to mid age we are accumulating the stress in the dna and the accumulated stress is being expressed in the form of diseases and disorders in this period and finally these diseases and disorders invade the life so this is a new strategy here It means certain diseases and disorders we all know the reason we all know the causes say for example infectious diseases so it may be due to bacteria or virus so we need to avoid the contact of bacteria or virus but here in this life cycle or in this pattern of life so whatever we observe it is we need to avoid the stress which is which acts as the windows of sensitivity for various diseases and disorders so accumulation of stress we need to avoid so this forms the basis of epigenetics again because there is a lot of stress induced chemistry involved in the dna or dna biochemistry we can say which forms the fundamental basis of epigenetics so now coming to the real definition of epigenetics epigenetics is the study of mechanisms that switch genes on or off so under which condition it is getting activated or under which conditions it is getting silenced so it is involved in every aspect of life and such reversible or potentially heritable changes affect the way we live as well as and our future generations so the stress whatever we are accumulating it not only affects we means the individuals who are exposed to stress but also it affects the future generations and the stress induced individual when he or she becomes a parent the offspring is also going to get affected so therefore epigenetics is a study of genetics much more depth uh, about the habit or the lifestyle or the stress and uh, it focuses or it uh, makes us to understand what we need to live or how we need to live for uh, to lead a healthy life so now there are two identical babies consider they are twins they born for the same parents and at the same time so they have a same genotype means the dna morphology or the dna architecture is same but they have different interest one kid is having interest in other aspects and the other kid is having interest in other aspects means they are phenotypically different and for one kid say consider the dna is exposed and the other kid the dna is not exposed so these two kids may have defects or may have normal behavior based on their phenotypic behavior or the exposure phenotypic exposure so this is all happen the changes in the dna pattern is happen because there is a one methyl group here so here it is the basis dna basis without any methyl group but here we could able to see a methyl group here so this methylated thing is very much responsible for various 
uh, reasons. Maybe it uh, influences gene silencing and it may be beneficial in certain occasions. And this gene silencing may be uh, dreadful or fatal in different occasions. So this is what we need to control. So now the identical twins may be of two types. So maybe in the same zygote, a yes, single egg fertilized by a yes, single sperm and then divided into two to give two babies. So this is one option. The other one is fraternal twins, means separate egg fertilized by separate sperms and given into two babies. So now, if you look into the chromosomal organization here for these two babies, so the stress for one particular baby is very much limited here, whereas it is expressed in other baby in a very high level due to the coloration, red coloration. This could be absorbed by the red coloration here. So this is chromosomal imaging. So this first image is observed at a three years of three months of age. And the same baby is observed after five years, at the age of five years observed. So now here the observation is more or less equal, we can say, but this happens even at the three months age. So it so there is some kind of stress. So from this, we could be able to see that the environment where we live or where we grow influences a lot in the chromosome, which forms the basis of diseases and disorders. So ultimately, the conclusion from the above experiment, the DNA, when it's exposed to various life environments, may get affected and we may get diseased. So this environment is nothing but a diet, uh, the seasonal or circadian rhythm in the environment, it may be diseases and other viruses. It may be toxic chemicals, toxic drugs, even the financial stress, exercise, state of the gut, medications, social contact, state of mind, and so on. So now, if we get a kind of stress in this domain, either directly or indirectly, which may lead to a stress for the baby or the offspring, and which is highly prone for diseases. So based on this concept, many things could be assessed. So this is the environment with all life stresses. So persons are doing exercise, active means uh, they are obese, many other stress factors. So the epigenetic modification occurs, which may lead to various diseases. So epigenetics based diseases in the following domains are uh, heart diseases, diabetes, cancer, metabolic syndrome, and rare diseases. So now the genes and the lifestyle, it is the physical state of a particular individual. So now the only observation here, this arrow is a reversible, means epigenetic modifications could be reversed. So this is the only way that uh, only means, this is the only favorable point we have here. So otherwise, all the situation becomes worse. So now the stress which may lead to disease and this could be reversed. So when it could be reversed, when we are having appropriate environment and lifestyle, it could be reversed. So earlier, the diseases were related to phenotype. Then based on the development of biotechnology, it was related to genetics. Now it was related to epigenetics. So the disease is a very small domain among these large areas. So now <clears throat> this genetic predisposition means single nucleotide polymorphisms, which may lead to epigenetic modifications through the process of DNA methylation or histone modification or RNA translations leads to various factors and diseases, means environmental changes, obesity, malfunction, liver disorders, intrauterine environment, everything leads to diseases. So now 
this is the fundamental basis of diseases that we invite while aging. So all these modifications, epigenetic modifications were converted into diseases when we are growing up gradually. So now the research says there are huge number of epigenetic targets. So this is the DNA histone proteins that is available in the chromosome. But under this area, huge number of targets. So this uh, available chart and in Google, you could be able to get this chart. Maybe the size is very small. The text is not readable, but it is available free. So huge number of targets. All these epigenetic targets were listed here. And these targets are these proteins when we carefully handle to either switch on or switch off, the diseases could be reversed. So this was the hypothesis behind this epigenetic modifications or epigenetic based pharmaceutical research. So now we have a huge area called epigenome and that we need to explore around the environment. We need to explore the biological network and the development pattern of the individual and their genetics. So the diseases due to aging is all due to all these four are still unexplored. Many things are there. So it is represented by the blue circle. So we are having this particular domain. So if you have a very clear observation or research in this particular area, we may be successful against diseases and we may live healthy during age. So these are the 23 chromosomes that is available in our body. So based on the stress, it acquires or it transforms into different fashion. And based on these transformations, we may develop into certain characteristics. So a particular individual may be a soldier, may be a laborer, may be an army man, may be a doctor. So all these things are based on the DNA pattern. So how the stress is being exposed to the chromosomes. So the disorders are inbuilt here in the genes and it is stimulated by the environmental factors. It may change the behavior it may alter the brain and its activity. It may be the fundamental basis of diseases. So we need to be careful about the DNA. We need to preserve the DNA through the environment as well as through our behavior in order to have our original individuality. So a little bit going deep into the epigenetics. So I'm just correlating the epigenetics with the cancer. So here, the fibers means the DNA, chromatin fibers, coupled with histone proteins, and it undergoes two different process at this level. Maybe it is switched on or maybe it is switched off. So when it is switched on, there are various processes which are mediated by enzymes, which reduces the epigenetic barriers and in, increases the cell state transitions. So this is called as permissive chromatin, means the DNA is accessible. It is exposed to the environment. But in the off condition, it is not exposed. And there are various other enzymes that acts here, which increases the epigenetic barriers and decreases the cell state transitions. And it is restrictive chromatin. So things are here in the memory, but it is not exposed. But when it is released, when it is open, things are decrease means epigenetic things are decreased and huge number of transitions are possible modifications are possible and this kind of modifications may be one of the leading causes of ca cancer so which may be in terms of replicative immortality invasion metastasis growth suppressor uh, inactivity uh, high angiogenesis cell death resistance and so on so this process forms one of the fundamental basis of hallmarks of cancer. So here, the normal cells were converted to cancer cells. So we are having a direct correlation for epigenetics. But also, we, have, we need to correlate the other way also. We need to think of the genetic fundamentals or genetic basis of converting a normal cell to a cancerous cell. So there could be mutation, there could be a deletion, there could be amplification in the genetic pattern, which may, and all our environmental behavior may convert this gene 
through these processes like DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding RNA, and all lead to cancer. So now, so the DNA, again, uh, which undergoes mutation here at this level, and the ATP-dependent chromatin remodeling complex is working at the histones, and histone methyl transferase and demethylase. So methyl transferase and demethylase. So here the process is going on, and the enzymes that generate metabolite inhibiting chromatin releasing factors. So here these enzymes. So all together influences the process of generation of a normal cell into a cancerous cell. So here the protein altering change in tumor DNA and it alters all this DNA methylation or histone tail methylation or acetylation, nucleosome composition and finally the epigenetic state and it is all getting transformed and finally the maltranscripted information is being expressed in the body. One more thing, the epigenetics is having another function. So here, uh, the substance will act as a reader and it will act as a writer, it will act as a eraser. So it reads the DNA, it writes over the DNA and it erases the DNA. So whatever the memory we derived from the parents and forefathers could be read, read out and it could be expressed. And this reading can be rewritten or modified. We can write new uh, informations over the DNA. And whatever the unwanted information in the DNA that could be selectively erased. So the epigenetics is having speciality around this domain. So therefore, this function of epigenetics is carefully or uh, classically utilized to treat the chromosomal-based diseases as well as the age-induced diseases. So generally, for the genetic diseases, we generally say that there is a no cure. So it is all nature, we need to accept, but here, we are getting a scope, we are getting a chance of editing the DNA through various functions of epigenetic tools, means the histone proteins, the readers, the writers, and the erasers. So we could remodel an entire DNA sequence for a specific function. So there are various mechanisms under epigenetics. So every mechanism is classified based on their color. So it is all RNA based. And again, this is RNA based, and this is histone based, and it is cytosine. So now, various processes are happening, ultimately lead to changes in chromosomal looping and conversion of heterochromatin or euchromatin or vice versa. So I just correlated the conversion of normal cells through genetics and epigenetics into tumor cells. So there are a lot of genetic modifications and the epigenetic modifications and the factors governing this epigenetic modification based on which we could have various proteins that is HDAC, HAT and SIRT. So, and all the many other enzymes related are catalyzing these activities. So this could be the pharmaceutical targets where we could work or where we could develop certain pharmaceuticals to block these enzymes or block these targets in order to block the conversion process of normal cells into tumor cells. So here also the genetic modifications could be inhibited by certain drugs. So that is given here, methylation inhibitor and deacetylation inhibitor. So this was a compact picture of a normal DNA and other chromosomal modifiers, means markers, epigenetic markers and any imbalance due to environmental stress or stresses, other stresses, they may lead to cancer. And this cancer DNA could be treated by various classes. And there are a lot of avenues. Chromatin modifiers, including mutations, copy number variations, expression data, essentiality data, sequence profile, structural data, 
post translational modifications as well as epigenetic drugs and inhibitors so we could carefully design or remodel our dna to develop new targets so the basic thing is dna modification histone modification and nucleosome positioning so this regulates so if you could regulate these things then all these processes associated with the tumorogenesis that is gene and microRNA expression dna protein interaction suppression of transposable element motility cellular differentiation embryogenesis x chromosome inactivation genomic imprinting everything could be regulated so therefore epigenetic based drug research is highly highly potential so coming to the regulators they could be classified into three modulators modifiers and mediators already few classes of drugs is already available so they perform specific functions uh, how to modulate and how to modify or how to mediate so this helps in the um, therapeutic avenues of genetic as well as age related diseases so we all know the basis uh, basis of dna adenine guanine thymine and cytosine so these three are sufficiently stable adenine guanine and thymine they doesn't take part in this methylation reaction so the methylation is happening only in the cysteine cytosine so the cytosine can be converted into methyl cytosine and hydroxymethyl cytosine through the use of enzymes dnmt and dna methyl transferase and 1011 translocation enzyme so this forms the additional bases of dna so usually we all know dna contains four bases now it becomes the fifth base and it becomes the sixth base so this methylation pattern and the methylation behavior methylation velocity methylation density so this influences the dna and we express its behavior into a disease or a disorder so the five methyl cytosine so it occurs only in the cpg dinucleotides so cpg is nothing but the cytosine is available in the form of a dinucleotide and generally uh, we have most of the cpg as in the methylated form by nature around 60 to 90 percentage is methylated but the remaining determines so the remaining one is yes it is a sequence of 200 bases with the cytosine and guanine and uh, remaining approximately 1 percentage is unmethylated and this unmethylated determines the 60 percentage activity of human gene pro promoters so therefore unmethylated cpg islands at promoters of genes allow transcription so we are not bothering about this 90 percentage but the remaining one which determines around 60% 50% of activity and 60% of human gene promotion is very much essential so the cytosine is if it is methylated it influences most of the physiological processes coming to the function of dna methylation it can block binding of transcriptional factors it can promote the recruitment of mbd proteins and mbd family members recruit histone modifying and chromatin remodeling complexes finally it is all relating with the gene silencing and genomic imprinting so gene silencing means we have the information in this gene say for example at a particular age we need to get a disease say at 45 so the gene could be silenced by the behavior by the environment so that we will not getting a disease by the age of 45 as expected the second one is genomic imprinting so here there are two conditions one is hypermethylation and the other one is hypomethylation so we need to have an average or a, a allowed limit of methylated cytosine in our body when it is hyper methylated at one of the two parallel alleles lead to mono allelic expression a similar gene dosage reduction is observed in x chromosome inactivation in female so it is something called uh, in postal we will be using a stamp 
the stamp when it is getting imprinted by the officials of post office it is no more useful so like that when the gene when it is hypermethylated it is no more useful and it is getting inactivated in females so which leads to disorder so this is called a genomic imprinting so here the methylation pattern maybe <coughs> people who are working can understand otherwise sorry so this is the unmethylated pattern but this is the methylated pattern so here huge number of uh, observational difference you could see here and methylated gene body and unmethylated gene body methylated repetitive sequence and unmethylated repetitive sequence just for visual comparison so the methylation can be of two types one is de novo the second one is methyl maintenance methylation de novo means by natural with the help of enzymes and that is happening or that we had during the process of embryogenesis before birth itself it was programmed so that is called as de novo methylation maintenance methylation it is based on the patterns that may be stably maintained during the replication to ensure that transposons remain in a silent state so it is maintenance so based on our practice we may be able to maintain the methylation pattern coming to the methylation mechanism so the cytosine here so it is closely arranged as a double helix strand and it is available in the form of a twist so now the cytosine will flip outside the dna strand and then it gets methylated and the methylated cytosine will flip back to the original double helix strand so as such the double helix strand is highly stable and it is not exposed for any reaction but now this process because of the stress and other influences the cytosine will divide or it will flip outside it will turn outside and because the steric hindrance of the molecules is very very compact there so it flips outside and it gets methylated once the methylated cytosine again it will go flip back and it will stay in its original position so this is the me mechanism of methylation so here methylated unmethylated silenced hemimethylated restored methylation so these are the various forms of methylation that may happen in our body so during this embryogenesis uh, embryogenesis during our birth we are unmethylated and then we have a program during the embryogenesis so we form methylated and this methylated could be silenced or it could be hemimethylated or it could be restored so this is a maintenance methylation so altogether the gene silencing is happening here which may be useful in certain conditions so this is all the epigenetic programming and it, this could be reprogrammed or it could be remodeled which influences the behavior of dna so the methylation how it could be programmed means it can be of passive demethylation or active demethylation so there are two different processes passively we could demethylate during the replication in the absence of the enzyme methyl transferase dnmt1 so it is a very slow process or maybe by a active demethylation process which occurs at the enzymatic replacement of 5mec with cytosine so now the proposed mechanisms here deamination of 5mec to thionine uh, thiamine followed by bea that is base excision repair or oxidative demethylation or radical sam mechanism all these things has yet to be achieved but there is a possibility so now coming to the histones so the histone proteins it is a highly ordered folding and it is present in the chromatin fiber we all know so here the terminal tail and the globular domain is the so which is an unmodified structure of a histone so when the histone is being modified based on the various stress factors it behaves or it has a structure like this so now this is a reversible phenomena where it could be turned on or it could be turned off so based on this process we may manipulate certain disease and disorders here so this is histone 
modifications. So histone modification is primarily based on five different processes. So the chemistry involved here is acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation, ubiquitylation, and sumoylation. So they all these things play a very important role in the transcriptional regulation, chromosome condensation, DNA repair, DNA replication, and splicing, alternative splicing. So here, the acetyl groups neutralize the positive charges on the basic histone tiles, first one. As a result, the electrostatic interactions between the histones and the negatively charged phosphate backbone of the DNA. So now, these processes controls various processes. So histone modifications becomes a very important factor. So this is the pattern of histone modifications in a gene. So here we could able to see the pattern. Every process has given a various color, acetylation blue, methylation red, phosphorylation yellow, ubiquitination green, and so on. So how the various modifications and its nomenclature is given pictorial. So now, Histone modifications on one or more tails act sequentially or in combination to form a histone code. So you have seen in the previous slide, so these are the histone codes. So now it will form a histone code. So that is read by other proteins and it will bring out distinct downstream events. So now a single histone mark does not determine the entire outcome. So combination of all the marks in a nucleosome specifies the outcome. So in the previous slide, so if this alone or this alone, any one individual will not work. They all work together and they all produce an outcome, maybe a disease or a disorders. Now we have to plan. So what could be the modifications in cancer with respect to histones, with respect to various processes, nucleosome positioning and DNA methylation, how it could be altered. So hypermethylation and global hypomethylation, I told you just before in the earlier slide, a similar behavior, which is responsible for transcriptional inactivation of genes and DNA repair, vitamin response, RAS signaling, cell cycle control, P53 network, apoptosis, all are hallmarks of cancers and the enzymes associated with the methylations, DMNT1 and 3B. So similarly, hypomethylation, global means the entire body. It may happen 20 to 60% less at repetitive sequences, reactivation of endoparasitic sequences and chromosomal instability, translocation and gene disruption. So at specific promoters, that can be aberrant expression of oncogenes and loss of imprinting. So means the memories could be lost. So this forms the basis of cancer epigenetics therapy. So here the normal cells and its pattern is given here, but for a cancerous cell, the pattern is totally different. So put together, if we could model, we may influence the tumorogenesis process and by which we may have new drugs. So coming to therapy, the enzymes could be inhibited. So most of the pharmaceutical drugs were enzyme inhibitors. So the enzyme inhibitors can reduce the growth, increase the chemosensitivity, increase the adhesion, and uh, transposons, IFN response could be improved, immunogenicity could be improved. So many roles could be played by the DNMT inhibitor. So the second drug comes under this category is uh, nucleoside analogs. So the first drug under this category is nucleoside analogs. So the nucleosides could be modified by basic chemistry. So they are metabolized and converted into nucleotides and then it is incorporated into DNA or RNA. And then the activity of DNA and RNA could be modified or manipulated by which we could be able to realize the anti-cancer activity. So this is one aspect. So these are non-nucleoside DMMT inhibitors, which are already available. So they could uh, directly influence the catalytic region of DMMT without incorporation into DNA, whereas the earlier case, it need to be incorporated inside the DNA. So it requires a genetic modification, DNA modification, but here DNA modeling, but here it is generally act as a routine drug, non-nucleoside inhibitors. 
so by which we could able to mediate our the overexpressed or mutated hdax in different tumor types most of the cancer types are having these kind of markers and uh, targets so therefore leading to therapy or improved therapy and the global imbalance of histone acetylation could be influenced a lot of acetylation does not only result in gene silencing but also lead to a decreased dna repair and constitution of heterochromatin structure could be achieved and the transcription repression could be achieved so all these things were influenced by histone modifications so the next one is hdac inhibitor that is histone deacetylase inhibitor so this enzyme influences the inhibition of histone deacetylase enzyme accumulation of acetylases and chromatin remodeling transcriptional activity restoration of malignant cells everything is influenced here by this enzyme so if we could able to design hdac inhibitors so they are class 1 2 and 4 inhibitors so these are the classifications and molecule structures they are inhibiting hdac and by which we may be able to get a very good anti cancer activity so we could able to manipulate these structures molecular modeling through computational or synthetic strategies to work on it and epigenetic targets uh, give synergism during combination so always combination therapy not only with epigenetic drugs but also with other drugs means conventional drugs like radiation or surgery or any other anti cancer drugs may be highly potential because dna methylation and histone modification represent the two most important pathways involved in the gene silencing so by using a combination therapy of this dmmt and hdac or along with other material means conventional anti cancer reagents could be promising so now the perspectives of epigenetics if you could see the combination of epigenetic therapy just now i told you uh, we could uh, use uh, the epigenetics for the diagnosis of cancers because a lot of biomarkers epi mutation based biomarkers are available in the patients so that is highly useful to diagnose a cancer in a much advanced stage because cancer one of the major disadvantage is a very late diagnosis and diseases or drugs could be designed to a target and to target a specific region of the genome and uh, all these things are possibilities and we may be able to design an artificial de novo dna methylating agents i told you de novo during pregnancy itself we are programmed for dna methylation so we may be able to synthesize that an artificial de novo dna methylating agents that may be influence a sequence specific methylation behavior or histone acetylation behavior so which may be highly helpful in the effective for the effective cancer therapy and then we may take new research on the epigenetics domain based on age related diseases and may based on computational and mathematical modeling and based on uh, creating landscapes epigenetic landscape what are the various factors influencing the lifestyle and how it is getting influenced so these are the research avenues that we are having with the help of epigenetics and epigenetics not only useful for developing new drug molecules it is highly useful to develop uh, animal models also relevant mouse models with specific phenotypes so by which we may have a real time assessment because generally we will be using the normal mouse or mice or animals so which may may not be so genetically so relevant but here we may be able to develop uh, mouse models for appropriate disease by which it may assist in the drug discovery and drug evaluation process so we all know now genotype and phenotype is closely related and if we integrate both these data the genotype based data and phenotype based data we may be able to isolate or classify patients and now 
the drugs were given for the entire population as such, which is not so personalized. But now after getting these things, the group of patients could be classified and the classified patients can be given a specified drugs, so which may lead to personalized medicine. So now the category of persons, they could be classified based on genetic makeup, epigenetic patterns, and environmental interactions. It is not only personalized, it may give a precise individualized treatment. So this is called as precision medicine. So these are the facilities what we have in our lab. So these are other facilities, sophisticated facilities that contributes for research. So we are looking for bright students and a few of the references what I have used for this presentation. And a few of my funders, thankful for most of the students, scholars, postdocs, collaborators, team, moreover the family. So we are also into a new course on the same concept, but in detail, organized by my collaborator from Italy. So probably if you're interested, you can see. So I'm happy to answer if there are some questions. Good afternoon, sir. This is Seema here from Department of Pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Thank you, madam. Uh, on all of epigenetics cancer uh, translation research. So there are some questions I would like to ask them with your permission. Please, madam. If I know, let me. <laughs> yeah, sure. So the first question is, are all epigenetics hereditary? Madam, your voice is not uh, clear for me. Can you <laughs> repeat? Yeah, sir. Are all epigenetics hereditary? No, still, I'm not audible. It's not so clear. Uh, I hope you can hear me now, sir. No, it is a mixed. <laughs> it is having a lot of noise. Now, sir? Yeah, please, let me try. Yeah. Are all happy mutations hereditary? Sorry, madam. <laughs> Helpless. Uh, one minute, one minute. Are all AP mutation is hereditary? Okay. No. It is partially hereditary. It is partially based on the habits, based on the behaviors, based on the stressful events, whatever we are facing in the life. The second query is, how do we measure the genomic stability as protein modification? How do we measure genomic stability as protein modification? It's a very big volume, big question, but a lot of experiments are available okay. to measure the DNA stability, the histone protein stability, the methylation behavior, Huge number of experiments are there. So we need to sample and we need to perform multiple assays to compare the normal behavior and how the methylation pattern changes, the histone protein modifications changes. So the chromatin changes, the sequence changes, the mutation analysis, many experiments are there. So we cannot specify something specific, but there are many experiments. Okay. Chromosomal abnormality of BRCA1 and BRCA2 leads to hereditary breast cancer. Can this gene alteration be uh, determined by prenatal diagnosis? Yes, BRCA1, BRCA2, uh, it could be diagnosed, but uh, see, everything is in our gene but it was modified or it was ma manipulated. Sometimes it is being catalyzed and sometimes it is being silenced. So it is all, all our environment that influences, maybe the food, maybe the working place, maybe the stress, maybe the many other habits. 
So there is an article, but uh, it, it says that uh, holistic way of living, say the Ayurvedic way of living, like practicing yoga, practicing exercise, practicing clean habits, so all these things influences the genetic behavior. Probably we could uh, silence the unwanted uh, memories in the DNA through these practices. And last one is, is there any relation between personalized medicine and epigenetics? Yes, of course, <laughs> there is a huge relation. So in the last slide, so I told you, so this particular thing is based on genetics. So the single nucleotide polymorphism is another thing. The histone modification, the DNA methylation and chromosome accessibility, it is all based on epigenetics. And the third thing could be related to the behaviors, that is smoking, physical activity, nutrition, and their interactions with the DNA. So precise medicine and personalized medicine is based on these three domains. That's all. Thank you then. <laughs> Thank you very much for your uh, clarification of all queries of the participants. Uh, before end of the ending of the session, I would like to thank the speaker of the day, Dr. Selvamani, to accept our invitation in his busy schedule. I thank the Dean, Management and Staff of College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dhananda Sagar University, for giving me an opportunity to conduct an, such an informative webinar. I thank the promotion team, Ms. Deepa Aram, Mr. Shakat Ali, Mr. Hemant Kumar, Mr. Mohammed Imtiaz for their continuous support backhand. I thank all the participants who attended this webinar and made this webinar successful. Thank you all once again. So I also thank all the audience for their patience listening and Dr. Josephine for the opportunity, the principal, the management and all the administrative team uh, for having conducted this event in a polite, pleasing manner. So thanks a lot for sharing my thoughts. Thank you. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Oh,